This short animated video explains the basic concept of two-way ANOVA step by step in statistics with the help of some relevant examples in very simple language. So please stay tuned, don't go anywhere else, just sit back, relax and enjoy this video on two-way ANOVA with relevant examples. Two-way ANOVA So before that, let's first focus on what is ANOVA. So ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance and is developed by a very famous statistician, Ronald Fisher. ANOVA enables us to test the significance of difference among more than two sample means. It is basically an extension of t-test and allow us to move just beyond comparing the two populations. When we only have two samples, t-test and ANOVA will give the same results. There will be no difference between ANOVA and t-test when there are only two samples. But if there are more than two samples, and using a t-test will not be reliable in this case. This is because conducting multiple t-tests, it will have a compounding effect on the error rate. As a result, it will have higher type 1 error alpha than the alpha that you have set for each t-test. ANOVA are basically are of two types, one-way ANOVA and two-way ANOVA. So what's the difference like one-way ANOVA and two-way ANOVA? The difference is in the one-way ANOVA, there's only one factor or independent variable. Well, in case of two way ANOVA, there are more than one independent variables. Today, we will be focusing only on the two way ANOVA. So, two way ANOVA, there is more than one factor or independent variable and compares three or more levels or conditions. That is two way ANOVA. Now, let's test the null and the alternate hypothesis for two way ANOVA. The null hypothesis, which means that the mean of all the groups are same or equal. We denote null hypothesis by H0. So in this case, mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3, so up to mu n. That is will be your null hypothesis. Alternate hypothesis. And that means the mean are different for at least one pair of group. We denote alternate hypothesis with h1. So mu1 is not equal to mu2, is not equal to mu3, so on up to mu n. So if any other group mean is significantly different from the overall mean, then the null hypothesis will be rejected. But if we, again, if, if you want to compare only two groups, please use the t-test here. So ANOVA uses the f distribution to determine the statistical significance. And we calculate ANOVA as variance between by variance within. So this f-test basically compares the variance in each group mean from the overall group variance. If the variance within group is smaller than the variance between group, f-test will find a higher f value. Therefore, higher likelihood that the observed difference is real and not due to chance. So let's first see what do you mean by variance between and variance within. So let's start with variance within. We also call it variance around or distribution. Suppose you have three sample means x1, x2 and x3 and you want to see if there is any difference that exists among them. So question here is whether they all are coming from same population or not, or if one mean is slightly offset from other two. So in this case, the variance around the variance within is the internal spread at for each distribution. In our case, X3 has a more internal spread than X2, and X2 has a more internal spread than X1. That is variance within or variance around. Now let us understand the variability among or between. Again, we take three samples, mu1, mu2, and mu3. And if we construct a normal distribution that passes through all these sample means, so variability among and variability between is the distance of each mean from the overall mean here. That is what you mean by variability among and variability between. That is the distance from the overall mean. Now, let's state the null hypothesis in this case. So, H0, that is the null hypothesis, where S says mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3 and alternate which notes by h1 or h8 says mu1 is not equal to mu2 is not equal to mu3 that is the alternate hypothesis and null hypothesis the overall f statistics is it in the table is a way to quantify the ratio of between group variation compared to the within group variation the total variance is nothing but variance between plus variance within if this ratio variance between the variance within is greater than 1, we reject the null hypothesis. If it is less than 1 or equal to 1, 
we fail to reject the null hypothesis. This is because if the between group variations is high relative to within group variations, then the F statistics of ANOVA will be higher and the corresponding P value will be lower, which makes it more likely that we reject the null hypothesis and the group mean are equal. Now let us consider a scenario where we are interested to investigate in understanding how different exercise programs affect the weight loss. We want to know if different types of exercise programs like cardio, strength training or yoga and the male and the gender have any effect on the weight loss. So as we are doing the two-way ANOVA, so we in this case we will have two factors. One factor is the type of exercise program with three levels like cardio, strength training and yoga. And second factor is the gender with two levels, male and female. So our goal in this two-way ANOVA is to determine if the different types of exercise program lead to different weight loss outcomes. If there is a difference in the weight loss outcomes between male and female or if the effect of exercise program on weight loss is different for male and female. So let's do this exercise right now. So in step 2, we'll collect the data. Suppose we want to conduct an experiment where we randomly assign participants to different exercise growth programs and measure their weight loss after 8 weeks. So group 1 will be aerobics, group 2 will be strength training and group 3 will be yoga and the data is on the left side. Let's use this data to perform the two-way NOVA. So step 3 would be state the null and the alternate hypothesis. So a null hypothesis will be H0, mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3 and there could be three uh, null hypothesis that there is no difference in the weight loss among the exercise group. There is no difference in the weight loss between male and female. There is no interaction between the exercise group programs and gender on the weight loss. Similarly, our alternate hypothesis would be H1, mu1 is not equal to mu2, is not equal to mu3. And our alternate would be there is a difference in the weight loss among exercise group programs. There is a difference in the weight loss between male and female. There is an interaction between the exercise group program and the gender on the weight loss. This are alternate and the null hypothesis. So step four would be analyze the data. So we have this data, now we need to calculate the group mean. How do we calculate the group mean? For each combination of gender and exercise program, calculate the average weight loss. Like for male cardio, we'll take average of 5, 4.8 and 5.2 from the second last column, divided by 3 and calculate as 5 kg. Similarly, we do it for female cardio, like 4, 4.2 and 4.1 divided by 3, you get 4.1. Similarly, you would do it for all the combinations of male and exercise program and then you need to create calculate the grand mean which is the average of all the group means over the average of all the weight loss that we have which comes to 3.56 step 5 now let us calculate the sum of squares ss for that you need to first calculate the total sum of squares which is by given as summation of xi minus grand mean square which is starting from i from 1 to 18. Grand mean that we recently calculated. So we'll subtract xi. xi is a each individual weight loss that we have from that grand mean. And you square that and you sum it. That will be your total sum of squares. And it comes to 16.64 given as SST. Next, we'll calculate the sum of squares for factor A. So our factor A is exercise program. In this case, you calculate as since there are three observations, so we can j from 1 to 3 and j into xj minus grand mean ka whole square. That means when you calculate, subtract each individual value where xj is the mean weight loss for each exercise program and nj is the number of participants in the each group. And you square that, subtract that from grand mean, you get the SSA or sum of squares for factor A. Similarly, do it for factor B, that is the gender here. For the same formula, and in this case, the difference is you will get SSB as 1.87, where in this case, XK bar is the mean weight loss for each gender, and NK is the number of participants for each gender. And then finally, we have the sum of square for interaction, SSAB, that is the interaction of gender and exercise program. Again, the formula is summation J1 to 3, and summation K is equal to 1 to 2. With these are levels j from three levels for exercise k is for two where we have two levels gender that is male and female 
summation n j k so, and then we have x bar j k minus x bar j minus x bar k plus the grand mean square. So if you apply this formula, you will get S S A B as or in fraction sum of square as 0.15 here. Here x j k is the mean of each combination of exercise program and the gender here. So we have next step that is step six. Calculate the error sum of square S S E here. So our uh, S S E is given by sum of square of total minus sum of square of factor A minus sum of square of factor B sum of square of interaction of A and B. If we, we have already calculated all three facts, you can calculate sum of square of error, which comes to as 0.26. We just, just need to subtract total sum of squares minus sum of square of uh, factor A, that is XI, sum of square of B, that is the gender, and then sum of square of A, B, that is interaction. Next, we need to calculate the mean sum of squares or MS. So our first mean sum of square for exercise program is given by MSA is the sum of square of A divided by DFA. DFA stands for degree of freedom or the number of exercise programs that we have minus 1. So we have 3 exercise programs. So minus 1, so you get DFA as degree of freedom as 2. And we put these values, you get MSA as 14.36 divided by 2, which comes to 7.18. Similarly, we will calculate mean sum of square for gender, MSB, which is given by MSB is SSB divided by DFB. In this case, what would be DFB? Number of genders, that means we have two genders, male and female, minus one. Two minus one, that is one. So when we put these values, we get 1.87 divided by one, which comes to 1.87. Next, we will calculate mean sum of square for interaction. Formula again is given by MSAB. S is A B divided by D F E B. Here we're talking about degree of freedom of interaction, which is nothing but degree of freedom of X size into degree of freedom of gender. You have to just have to multiply both of degree of freedoms. In the first case it was two, degree of freedom of DFA was two, DFB for gender was one. It comes to two. So if we put S as sum of square of interaction as 0.15, which we already calculated, divided by two, and it comes to point. 0 0.75 or 0 0.07 in the round off. Next, we have mean sum of square MSE, which is given by MSE's SSE, sum of square of errors, divided by degree of freedom of errors. Again, the degree of freedom here is total degree of freedom minus degree of freedom of factor A, degree of freedom of factor B, minus degree of freedom of interaction. Total, the total degree of freedom was 18, minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, which comes to 12. So we put the values, we get 0 0.26 as sum of square of error divided by degree of freedom of error divided by 12. So we get mean sum of square error as 0 0.022. Now step number 8. We need to calculate the F values. For that, for the exercise program, it is given, F value is given by MSA divided by MSE. We put these values for what we already calculated. We have 7.18 divided by 0 0.022 it comes to 331.46. Similarly, we will put F value for gender. FP is MSP divided by MSC. And we put the values, we get 1.87 divided by 0 0.022. It comes to 86.26. And F value for interaction would be again FAB, MSAB divided by MSE, which comes to 0 0.07 divided by 0 0.022. It comes to 3. 4, 5. Step 9. Now let's compare the F values with the critical values. Alpha, assuming alpha is equal to 0 0.05. We know degree of freedom of factor A is 2, factor B is 1, interaction A, B is 2, and A is 12. That we have already calculated. Now let's calculate the critical F values for factor A and the exercise program. We know these factors, degree of freedoms. No. Critical value for F is F 0 0.05, that is at 0 0.05 significance level. For degree of freedom of 2 and uh, error, degree of freedom of error 12, we do go to F table, we plot, uh, do intersection of 2 and 12, degree of freedom, and we get 3.89. Similarly, we do it for factor B, which has degree of freedom of 1 and error as 12, we get 4.75. Similarly, we do it for interaction, which again comes back to 2 and 12, and its value is 3.89. Step 10. Interpret the result now. 
Now, if f critical value is less than the f stat or the f calculated value, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. If f critical value is greater than f stat, we reject the null hypothesis. Let us look at the values that we have got. f values that is 331.46, which is much greater than the critical values of 3.885. Therefore, the effect of excise program on weight loss is significantly higher. F factor for B is equal to 6.26. This again is much greater than the critical value of 4.74. Hence, gender has significant effect on the weight loss. Then in the interaction 3.41, this is slightly below the critical values of 3.85. This, this indicates the interaction effect between excise program and gender is not statistically significant. So, for factor A, it is significant. B, yes. But for attraction, it is not statistically significant. That is to be an over for you. If you are still watching this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and do press the bell icon as well for all the notifications from digital e-learning. Do like this video, share this with all your friends and colleagues and in case if you have any comment, do let me know in the comment box below. Now let's move to the quiz time. Read the questions and leave your answers in the comment section below. First question. Which of the following is not an assumption of two-way ANOVA? Options are Population from which the samples are drawn must be normally distributed. The variance of population must be equal. Samples must be independent. The sample size must be equal. Question number two. In the two-way ANOVA, the interaction effect test what? Options are whether the effect of one factor depends on the effect of other factor, whether the mean of the level of one factor are equal, whether the variance of the levels of the one factor are equal, the relationship between the two factors and the response variable. Question number three. What does a significant interaction effect in two-way ANOVA indicates? Options are the mean effect are not significant. The two factors influence the response variable independently of each other. Effect of one factor on the response variable is different at different levels of the other factors. The interaction terms is non-additive. You can leave your, all your answers in the comment section below. I hope you like this video on two-way ANOVA. Thank you.